So you've probably been asking yourself over the past couple days, is Behemoth worth fighting? Is it worth farming up? Is it worth trying to kill it? Should you be just going ahead and trying to do it solo and just acquiring items through the Palico gadgets? Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we are showing just how good this equipment can be with the Insect Glaive. Now, the Draken armor set is absolutely amazing for just about any weapon for a balls-to-the-wall offensive armor set. You will have a couple wasted skills depending on the weapon that you are using, but all in all, the entire set is incredibly useful, offers quite a few jewel slots for decorations, and it's really versatile. So I am going to be showing off my particular build for the Insect Glaive. I hope you guys all enjoy it. If you do, don't forget to show your support and smash that like button. Without further ado, let's go into the build itself. Now with the way we have this set up right now, we do have max sharpness on the weapon with level 5 handicraft. We have 100% affinity when attacking weak spots, 300 dragon element, and high elder seals. This is going to be great against elder dragons. Now there is a couple variations that you can use with the jewels depending on your personal playstyle, and we'll get to that in just a second. So we are using the True Gaibolg, which is a really phenomenal weapon, especially with the high dragon element. We are using the Handicraft 3 Charm, because you do actually need four levels, a minimum of four levels to get just into the white level of sharpness. So just keep that in mind. And then uh, obviously we're using the entire Draken Coil Alpha armor set. So let's go into the decorations and uh, and the skills that we've gotten here. So you can see, oops, oh god. So we've got uh, Soul of the Dragon 2, which is elemental damage increase for jumping attacks. Soul of the Dragon 4 prevents your weapon from losing sharpness during critical hits. So as long as we're not flopping around like someone having a seizure and just randomly hitting, we will have 100% affinity. It is absolutely amazing and you're never gonna lose sharpness. Now we got Critical Eye level six. You do not need to boost it up to uh, the level seven because we have the plus five affinity from the level four attack boost. Now I went with Handicraft level five on this just because if you are going to be jumping around with this, you will be losing sharpness. So having that just a little bit more white level of sharpness will pretty much make it so that you have white sharpness throughout the entire fight, no matter where you're hitting. Then we've got Critical Boost level 3, which comes from the armor itself. Weakness Exploit, which we had to use three Tenderizer Jewels to get. Now this is where you can change things up. We've got Power Prolonger 3 on here, so that you can keep your Kinsect bonuses for 40% longer. Now depending on your personal playstyle, you could change this up. So I was really torn between using Enhancer Jewels, or using something like Marathon Runner, or you can even go for Flawless. So you can get two levels of Flawless, um, or uh, two Marathon Runner, or obviously the two Enhancer Jewels. Or you could swap out the Handicraft 3 Jewel and only run with four levels, and you can get three levels of Flawless or three levels of Marathon Runner. So it's completely up to you what you want to do in that department, but all in all, it's a very easy set to put together. The Tenderizer Jewels, I have tons of these. I don't know if everybody else does, but they're not a particularly rare jewel, so everybody should really be able to get three of these without too much issue. It's not like a Sharp Jewel or a Mighty Bow Jewel or anything like that. It's pretty easy to acquire. So let's go ahead. Right now, without being fully buffed, we have 741 attack. Now we can go ahead and pop a Demon Powder, because that's what people should be doing anyways. And then uh, we've already got the Mega Demon Drug on. Let's go ahead and do a Might Seed as well, because they all stack. And that puts us at 803 uh, attack without even getting our Kinsect boost. Let's go ahead and get the three Kinsects. That one, that one, and this one. And now our attack is at 924. <laughs> now let's go ahead and um, I guess we do need the HUD. Well, we're not going to lose sharpness, but just as proof for those of you that are newer. With this 100% affinity build on the pull, we will crit 100% of the time and therefore never lose sharpness. So our final hit with the Tornado Slash does 201 damage. I'm just going to go ahead and show that again because I didn't turn the camera like I was supposed to. All right, well, 195 on that one, but tops out at uh, 201. If you're just doing your standard stuff here, you can see it pumps out quite a bit of damage on the ground. So let's go ahead and show the aerial damage. 
Uh, 67, 69. Pretty good. And let's see if we can get the last hit. Oh, I screwed up. All right, we got to attack a little bit lower to get that last hit on the pole. And now I will be just doing gameplay footage of this right afterwards. So you guys could check out the sharpness loss and stuff like that on an actual monster. All right, so 229 it looked like. I missed. Ah, it's ridiculous. But anyways, it does quite a bit of damage. It's not too much of a worry because your main damage is actually going to come from on the ground. But this build is made for being airborne. So you definitely want to take advantage of that when you can. Now, if you're not interested in using the true guy bulg, we've got the Devil Joe one. Now, we are going to be critting for, what is it, 65% uh, of the time versus 100% of the time. We do have 129 attack fully buffed. So we'll be doing uh, quite a bit more damage. Go ahead and do the tornado slash. So 213. I still think that the uh, true guy bulg is going to be better long run in the fights because he will be critting significantly more. So you really won't have to worry about losing the white level of sharpness. But regardless, even with this weapon, you're going to be hard pressed to run out and um, you'll be able to resharpen by the time the monster is running to a different location anyways. But this just this build just does so much damage. Now let's go ahead and get into some gameplay with this build so you can understand the sharpness loss and how much damage it's putting out. Now I was running in this particular event with four levels of handicraft versus five, and you can see that I've already lost the white level of sharpness very early on in the fight. Now you can use wet fish fin plus or just regularly sharpen your weapon and you can obviously get that white level of sharpness back. Plenty of opportunities in every fight to do that, but if you're looking to just never lose white sharpness, you're going to want to probably run with five handicraft. As you can see, if you are flopping around in the air, you are going to lose sharpness at a quicker pace than you otherwise would because you're not going to be critting as much depending on the monster you are fighting. But all in all, it is an amazing build. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to share your support and smash that like button. And if you want to see more Draken armor based builds, let me know in the comments below. And I will see you all in the next one.